Slab analysis in design can be performed by meshing slab using finite element shells. This method can be used for all types of slab, but it is essential for irregular and flat slab system. There are two choices of slab analysis. Building analysis with slab meshed. Tick includes slab and building model. This will assume a full 3D analytical model from top to bottom story. Hence, inherent 3D effect of multiple stories is included. Gravity and lateral load effects can be obtained. The other option is finite element floor analysis. The analysis considers a subframe of one story only. It is fast and simple as analytical model is only one story. Secondary 3D effects of other floors are ignored. Only gravity load can be obtained, that is, no lateral load analysis. Click Slab Strip Function in Modeling tab. Ensure to choose FE Strip as type in Slab Properties. Span Strip is for slab supported by beams. Fixed Band Strip is for flat slab with no beams. Analysis Result Source, pick either Building Analysis or FE Floor Analysis. Ensure Slab Strip Start and End Boundary Condition is set correctly. Click and drag the slab strip across slabs to be designed. Do this both horizontally and vertically, that is, orthogonal direction. Run building analysis or FE floor analysis according to the chosen source option. Go to analytical model to examine the slab strip and contour results, example moment contour. Use slab analysis and design function to generate rebars in design report. Note, slab strip can also be created after analysis, provided nothing has changed to invalidate the analysis. Let us build a simple model as illustration. Start a new model, say FE slab. Choose Eurocode Singapore template, OK. Click on orthogonal axis generator. Use the defaults to generate four horizontal and vertical axis with five meters spacing each. Firstly, create a simple tabletop model. Create four columns and four beams with default sizes. Click on slab icon and click OK to generate the load cases and combinations. Use all the defaults, OK. Then insert slab with 150 mm depth. With 30 mm cover. Dead load of 1 kN per meter square. Life load of 5 kN per meter square. Then, create another tabletop flat slab model without beams. Create four columns with default sizes. Then slab with 150 mm depth. With 30 mm cover. Dead load of 1 kN per meter square. Life load of 5 kN per meter square. Click on Slab Strip icon. Start with Direction X. Since we want to use the Finite Elements Slab Design method, change type to FE Strip. For Finite Elements Strip, there are two types, namely Span Strip and Fixed Band Strip. Span Strip is the alternative to Moment Coefficient method by meshing of slabs. Span Strip must pass through slabs supported by beams or walls. Example, one beam at the left side, then one slab, then one supporting wall at the right-hand side. Span reinforcement is calculated according to maximum moment found in span zone, as shown in the above diagram. Support reinforcement is calculated from support moments found in support zone, as shown in the above diagram. Select span strip, since we will be cutting the slab strip for the beam slab model. Analysis results source. Choose building analysis. This means that we must choose to mesh the floor slabs during building analysis. FE floor analysis is the other option, which is a different analysis method that only considers one floor at a time. Boundary conditions. Slab. The strip starts and ends inside a slab. User must specify the length of the slab where the strip ends. The support top bar will extend into the last slab. BOB bending of bar. The strip starts and ends beyond an edge beam or wall. The support steel at the end will bend down into the beam or wall. Cantilever. The strip starts or ends beyond a cantilever slab. Boundary condition at start and end must be chosen correctly, otherwise, slab design will be erroneous. If boundary condition has changed, example, due to change in slab layout, existing slab strip must be deleted and recreated. 
Choose vending of bar for both the start and the end, since the tabletop model starts and ends with beam. Place the mouse cursor at the left-hand side of the first beam. Click and move the mouse cursor to the right. Hold down Ctrl key to snap to horizontal. Click at the right-hand side the beam. The FE slab strip will be created. We need to cut the strips orthogonally to obtain design both in X as well as Y direction. Change the direction to Y, change number to 1. Cut a vertical strip from bottom to top. No rebars are shown as we have not run building analysis. Now, move the plan view and focus on the right flat slab model. As this is a flat slab, we cannot use the span strip. We must use the fixed band strip. The fixed band strip is specifically for the design of flat slab, raft, or mat foundation. Width of the strip is defined by left extent and right extent input, as shown in the left diagram above. A single arrangement of top and bottom rebar will be designed. It will cover and extend to the entire length and width of the strip, as shown in the right diagram above. Top rebar is calculated based on the maximum negative moment detected in the entire length and width of the strip. Bottom rebar is calculated based on the maximum positive moment detected in the entire length and width of the strip. In the slab strip properties, choose X direction. Under FE strip, choose fixed band strip. Under analysis result source, pick building analysis. Boundary conditions is not applicable for fixed band strip, hence it's gray out. The extender scope by default is 1 meter left and 1 meter right, giving a total of 2 meters width. Integral option allows design moment to be averaged. This diagram shows a typical bending moment diagram at the flap slab and column interface. By default, the maximum nodal moment will be used for the FE fixed band strip design, example right at the peak at the center line of column. The integral option will average the design moment across the width of the strip. As such, the wider the strip, the lower the average design value, especially at the column support region, where the moment changes abruptly. Hence the user should carefully evaluate how wide to create each strip when integral is checked, otherwise, the design may be too unconservative. Place the mouse cursor at the left side of the slab. Click and move the mouse cursor to the right. Hold down Ctrl key to snap to horizontal. Click at the right side the slab. The FE slab strip will be created. No rebars are shown as we have not run building analysis. The strip width does not cover the entire slab, hence, only the design moments within the boundaries of the strip will be used. In a real flat slab project, it would be more reasonable to cut several strips of different width, example different strip at column and span area. However, for simplicity, we can adjust the width of the strip to cover the entire slab, so the design will take into account the entire boundary. We can manually key in the left and right width. Alternative, we can automatically adjust the width by clicking on the arrow icon. Then click on the top edge of the slab. Notice left value will auto-update. Similarly, click on the arrow icon again, then click on the bottom edge of the slab. The right value will auto-update. Click update and the width of the slab strip will now extend to edges of the slab. We will not check the option of integral strip, since the width of the strip is very high and averaging the design moment will be too unconservative. We need to cut the strips orthogonally to obtain design both in X as well as Y direction. Change the direction to Y. Cut a vertical strip from bottom to top. Similarly, adjust the left and right width of the slab strip. Click Update. Close the Slab Strip Property dialog. We will now run Building Analysis. Go to Analysis tab. Click Building Analysis. Click Edit Material. Click Steel Grade of Slabs. Click Edit, next to Rebar Diameters. Review the diameters of bars to be used for the design of slab. Check or uncheck diameters to be considered in the slab design. Click OK, OK, OK. Go to Model Options. Slab Model. By default, include slabs and building model is unchecked. This means that the slabs will not be considered or included in building analysis. Since we have chosen to design the slab using finite element method, we must check this option, so the slabs will be included by meshing of the slabs. Click Stories to be meshed and tick Story 1. Use decomposed slab loads and meshed stories should be unchecked in analyzing model which consists of flat slab system, transfer slab system and irregular slab system. 
Since there is a flat slab, we must untick this option. Include column sections in FE model allows rigid perimeter of the column to be considered. The slab will be meshed to the perimeter of the column, rather than the center line. Ticking this option will introduce more meshing complexity, so let's uncheck this option for simplicity. Shell element size. The mesh uniformity can be controlled by specifying different minimum and maximum shell size. The objective is to have a minimum of 8 to 10 slab meshes between column or supports. Let's input 800 millimeters as minimum. Slab stiffness coefficients. In plane, membrane, for slab shells. If checked, this option can simulate semi-rigid floor diaphragms. This mainly affects lateral load analysis. Bending stiffness, out of plane for slab. According to certain concrete design publication, it is common practice to take into account crack and creep effect of concrete slab by decreasing the slab stiffness. Let us input 0.3 or 30%. Kindly refer to the Proto Help Center for more details on these slab model options. Go to Analysis. Click Building Analysis. Then click Building Analysis. After Analysis, the summary will appear. Click OK. Close the Building Analysis dialog. Click on Analytical Model, Building Analysis Model, because we have chosen to run Building Analysis. The Analytical Model view will open. The functions of Analytical Model are covered in detail in the tutorial video titled, Post Analysis, Analytical Model. Kindly go through that tutorial first, as we will only cover the functions related to slab analysis using finite element meshing method. By default, the displacement of all the elements is shown in red in the Result tab. Let us deactivate this first. The analytical model is what gets analyzed and where results can be displayed. As you can see, the columns and beams are idealized as single line frame elements, and the slabs are meshed into triangle shells. If you hover the mouse cursor on any beam, the beam label, frame number and node number will be shown. Similarly, if you place mouse cursor on the slab shell, go to the Members tab, under Frame Members icons, click Frame Load, and Frame Load Labels. This will switch on the loads and values on frame members, which are columns, walls and beams. At the right side is the Load Cases and Load Combinations pane. Since G-Load Case is selected, the diagram is showing all the dead load calculated on the beams on the left model. This is the self-weight of the beam. The weight of the slab is not calculated on the beams because we have chosen not to use decomposed slab loads in meshed story in the modal options, slab model inputs. Hence the slab shell's loads are automatically applied onto the slab itself. The right side is the flat slab model, so there are no beams and hence no frame loads are shown. Turn off both frame loads and frame load labels. Under the shell member icons, you can switch on or off shell information. Example, turning on and off thickness. Turn on pressures. This will be the pressure in kilonewton per meter square on each slab shell element. This is G-load case, which includes the self-weight of the slab, as well any other dead load on this slab. Select Q-load case. You can verify by hand calculation whether these values shown is reasonable. Turn off the pressure. Let us now look at the result. Go to the Results tab. Select G-load case. Turn on Displacements. The displacement is shown in red lines for G-load case. Click Animation for better visualization. Turn off Bi-directional animation to show deflection in the direction of applied loads. Check displacement under each load case, including the pattern load case Q, P, and notional horizontal load cases, example NGX and NGY. It is very important to check and verify whether the displacement is reasonable, otherwise, the analysis forces will be in doubt, as the deflection of a member is a direct reflection of the forces it experiences. Turn off the animation. Units of displacement can be changed by going to Setting Center, Unit and Format. Under Displacement, change unit to millimeters, click OK. You can show actual displacement values by clicking X, Y, Z, or R equal resultants. The legend is as shown. At the bottom box is shown the maximum displacement. You can click on it, and an arrow will appear to identify the node with maximum displacement under the selected load case. Turn off the displacement. For a standard structure, we should proceed to examine the member force diagrams. We have already covered this in previous tutorial, hence, we will skip this for now, 
As our focus is on the analysis and design of the slab, let us now review the slab strip diagram in the FE model. Zoom to the beam slab model. Recall that we have created span strips X1 and Y1. Under slab strips diagrams, select strip X1. The design moment of the strip will be shown along the strip X1. This maximum positive and negative design moment is calculated based on all the results of the FE slab shells. The gray nodes are additional lateral or traverse nodes that are calculated to offer greater precision as the slab shell nodes may not be sufficient if the slab mesh is large. Results collection method. Maximum. The maximum of the lateral or traverse nodes at each station is used. Strip line. Only displays the values at the station nodes and lateral nodes are not considered. MD is design moment which has included the wood armor effects. Wood and armor is an analysis method that explicitly incorporate twisting moments into slab design contours. It is recommended to always refer to MD plots that include wood and armor adjustment, as these will always be higher than the unadjusted moment. This is evident by comparing the two design diagrams. For more details, you can refer to this reference wood, RH, 1968. The reinforcement of slabs in accordance with a predetermined field of moments. Currently, we are looking at strip diagram of load case G. We can look at combination 2, example factor G and Q, and other load combinations. It is more meaningful to look at envelope diagrams as it is a superimposition of all load combinations, as these will be used in the final rebar strip design. Specifically, envelope minimum will superimpose all combinations results, and just how the hogging, negative moments. Conversely, maximum envelope will superimpose all combinations and just show the maximum sagging positive moments. You may proceed to display Y1 strip result. Let us zoom in and look at the flat slab model. Next to slab strip, choose X2, which is the horizontal fixed band strip we cut through the slab. Notice that lateral or traverse gray nodes are shown for the entire extent of the strip width. This is expected of fixed band strip where all nodes within the strip length and width will be considered. Results collection method. The maximum and strip line is the same as previously. Integral option is only available for fixed band strip. As explained previously, this will average the design moments along the lateral nodes. This will result in lower design moment as compared with maximum method. Integral option will only be used in design if it is specifically chosen in the slab strip properties, else it's just for viewing purpose here. You can choose Y2 to look at the diagram of the vertical strip. Investigate both minimum envelope and maximum envelope. Go to the Contours tab. This is where we can interrogate the slab analysis and design diagrams in more detail. Take note that this part is not compulsory. If you have already created the slab strips and just want to go straight to design, we can skip this part. Click Contours. The effects pane will appear where there are options to show displacement, forces, bending moments and required steel area contours. You can resize the effects pane to expose more text. To create a bigger viewing screen, click on the filter pin to hide it. Let's examine the displacement contour. Click on displacement C and load combination G plus Q. The legend is with reference to the global coordinate system, as shown at the bottom left. Hence displacement C is out of the plane of the slab. Forces contour F11 and F22 are direct axial force per unit length in the plane of the shell. F12 is the shell shear force per unit length. Bending moments in global direction. Mx and My is the bending moment in global direction X and Y respectively. Mxy is the twisting or torsional moment due to the wood armor effect. Bending moment in local direction. This will be similar to the global direction if there if no angle value is specified in the slab properties. Design moments, wood armor. These are design moments with wood armor torsional moments included. From the design moments, the required steel are calculated. There are four contours due to two directions, top and bottom steel. For example, a S1 bottom will show only the bottom required steel in direction 1. The rest of the values is set to zero. Required steel areas with wood armor effects included are marked by extra D, example ASD1, bottom. We recommend you always use the ASD contours as the values will always be higher than the AS contours. The rest of the icons are discussed in more detail in Proto Help Center and in Flat Slab Design Guide, as shown in these links. Click on the Story 1 Plan View. 
We can design the slabs now. Go to Design tab, click Slab Analysis and Design. The Slab Analysis and Design dialog will appear with a summary of slab strip design, such as type, utilization ratio, design status and rebars. The design status is shown as red cross, and there is no rebar stated as design has not been performed. Before design let's click settings and parameters. The slab settings will appear. In the design tab are options such as support bar extension lengths, parameters, and others. Slab design combinations. There is choice to use all combinations including lateral combinations, or simply vertical or gravity combinations. Column node interpretation. There are three choices. Include column node results. All results from all nodal points, including column peak center nodes, will be considered for the design of the slab. All green nodes shown in the diagram are included. This will result in the highest design value amongst the three options. Ignore column node results. Column center node will be ignored, and the results from the adjacent node will be used. Red node, that is the column center node is ignored. This will result in lowest design value amongst the three options. Average with nearest node results. The results are obtained by taking an average from the peak center node and the neighboring nodes. The red column center node is ignored. The smaller, interpolated green dots between nodal points are used. This will result in approximately intermediate design value amongst the three options. Wood armor effects in design. Let's choose include, instead of ignore, for reason already discussed. Go to rebars tab. Take note we will use the default H10 for minimum bar size. Further, will be accept the minimum and maximum bar spacing and bar spacing step, etc. Appearance controls the graphical presentations such as show steel bar total length, span lines, etc. Click OK to exit the dialog. Let us design slab strip X1. Select the slab strip by clicking on it. Click Interactive Design. The table shows the summary of the slab properties and design results, including the rebar. Click Design to design this slab strip. The design results and rebar information will be populated. Notice the deflection check fails. You can click on the span rebar to change it. You can increase the bar size and decrease the spacing. Notice that deflection ratio L divided by D updates and improves, but the deflection still fails. This means if deflection is a real concern, then the slab thickness should be increased. Click Design to redesign back to original rebar. Click Strip Profile. This will show the envelope bending moment diagram and deflection by default. You may choose a load case or load combination to view, if desired. Click Exit to close it. Click Report to generate the design report for this slab strip. Review the report. Close it. Click OK to close the interactive design. Only X1 slab strip is designed. Although deflection check fails, the slab strip is still marked as green tick. The reason is deflection check is not a critical criteria. Click Slab Strip Design, Batch Mode, to design all slab strips in one go. The standard three option to batch check or redesign are available. Choose the last option and click Design to redesign all fresh. Click Close. Fixed Band Strip X2 and Y2 fails. Double click on X2. The reason for failure is section insufficient. This is rather expected as the flat slab is only 150 mm thick. Hence, the only solution is to increase the slab thickness. Click OK to close. Filter. Allows filter by story, slab thickness and design status. Click Cancel. Copy bars and paste bars. Allow copy and paste bars of similar slabs marked with equal symbol. First select the slab strip, then click copy bars, you can then select another slab strip with equal sign and paste it. Only slab strips with the exact slab configurations and direction can be copied and pasted. Click design report. The entire slab reinforcement design report of all slab strip can be generated, provided the box under print is checked. If not, click mark all slab strips before generating the report. Any failure in the design will be highlighted in the notifications pane at the left. Review the report, and then close it. To summarize, the deflection check fails for X1 and Y1, while the X2 and Y2 fails. In order to achieve all pass, we need to increase the slab thickness. Close the dialog box. As shown on plan view, only slab strips that pass will have the reinforcement shown. Let us now increase the slab of the beam slab model to 200 millimeters. 
the message will warn us to repeat building analysis. Then change flat slab thickness to 300 mm. Rerun building analysis. Go to slab analysis and design again. Perform slab strip design batch mode, last option, design. All the slab design should pass now. Review the design report. Close the report. Close the design screen. The slab rebars are now all shown on the plan view. Go to drawings and reports. Click form plans to generate a preview of the drawings. Click OK. A form plan view will be generated. In order to produce a DWG or DXF file, we need to go to Proto Details.